Welcome everyone. My name is Lucky J and this is the Beginner's Guide. Uh, this was recommended to me. I honestly have no idea what's up with it. Apparently it's the same creators as the Stanley Parable. Um, that game is freaking awesome. I love the Stanley Parable. I don't play on the channel just because I've seen all the endings. I couldn't possibly make it more entertaining than any other YouTuber has made it before. Simply because I... It's not a first time reaction, but this, I will tell you, I'm going in blind, so uh, we're going to see what happens. I honestly have no idea how long this game is, what it's about. The audio is on. You can hear the little birds chirping. It's brilliant. Okay. Standard controls, not too complicated. I like it. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing the beginning. It's not the same narrator. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable, and while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. Mm. It's a level for Counter-Strike. I can see. You can walk around here, by the way. And uh, <laughs> mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. All right. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. And of course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed <laughs> by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, what was going through his head as he was building this? I can't jump this on this. This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean. Not that they're all fascinating as games, but <laughs> that they are Burn. all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get to know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Really? We're going to explore all his so, games? It's 2008. Coda starts making these games, and he never releases them. Oh, anything. you're such a good friend. He doesn't put them onto the internet. He just makes them and then immediately abandons them, and they sit on his computer forever. Wow. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point, he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. Oh, no. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game, and then he hasn't made another one oh, since. No. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. Is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating so again. So this is just like a and little tribute. if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at <laughs> B-A-V-E-Y-W-R-E-D-E-N at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper okay. game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. Okay. I always wanted to make like a uh, World War... Not World War Three, uh, Modern Warfare Three map, like, uh, or at least remake it in one of those Google places. Oh, cool. Okay, so it's a FPS. I can't aim down sight though. This game is called Escape from Whisper, hmm. and it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Okay. They have several sounds from, I don't know, even Battlefield or something. I don't know. The Whisper Machine status. Okay. This reminds me of Halo, some of this. Security call breached. This is really cool, this guy, to show off his friend's game, even though it doesn't it have any looks stuff. Like this game was abandoned mid yeah, there's no enemies. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies yep, somewhere. Yep, I would think so. But then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. 
You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. Oh, I ran out of bullets. <laughs> and I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. I thought that meant I could just have infinite ammo. No, he means that I should do run out of bullets. Okay. Let's go into space. Yeah. Still says it's I love active. How you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. <laughs> yeah. You're such a good friend for showing off these things. That or you're like his worst enemy because you're showing off everything he's buried away. And this is just here for no reason. This is like me trying to make the Minecraft maze. Well, this actually kind of get well. Apparently, the space station has a labyrinth. On yeah, because I. Uh, Sure, I don't know. <laughs> There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just gonna skip you on past it. Oh, okay. Well, let's just go back. <laughs> or, if you'd really like to solve the labyrinth, you're welcome to do that. Yeah, see, this is definitely like the Stanley Parable in that way. Let's solve it. No, there's really, there's really nothing here. You could tell. It just eventually winds its way around. That's cool, though, that he'll let me do it if... If I want, I almost got lost as well, so it's probably a good idea just to listen to him. Am I lost now? No, no, no. Okay. Still active. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. Really? The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Okay, so this is the engine room. Hey, you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Could you give yourself? Wow. Well, you have to have a connection with this character first. Is he going to say anything if I don't do anything? I'm running out of mouse space. Okay, I'm going the other way because I've run out of space. <laughs> Whatever. Okay, so I just turned over. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug hmm. somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Okay, let's do it again. That's cool. Okay, it had me turned around the wrong way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is way better, to be honest. Oh, you can see the labyrinth from here, too. And my the house. Beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes mm -hmm. you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Except for that bottom. Or this floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place, juxtaposed against all of the hysteria There's that the you've corners. just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. Can't move. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts I like of directions. That. That's a cool idea. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. It's like, don't just start writing a novel, write some short stories first. It's a good plan, especially because you have more unique ideas that way. The past was behind her. I can't do anything. Oh. Yep. In oh. this game, you can only walk backwards. Awesome. Okay. This is like a, uh, what is it, strat roulette on Counter-Strike where you can only, like, fight backwards. <laughs> it's brilliant. Cannot so be it's seen. A short and relatively minimalist yeah, yeah. Combining motion and narrative. Didn't go very far. It is less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. That's true. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. Okay, so I'm a girl apparently, and this is talking to me like uh, that one person on Game of Thrones. A girl looks behind her, but if the future is always behind her. But if the future is always behind her, how will she find the strength? Come on. To confront it? <laughs> and he has, like, question mark. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it yeah, ends. Yeah, message. Didn't need anything more than mm -hmm. that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Yeah. Okay, next one. 
this this guy I hope this guy makes some more games cuz as long as uh Jim doesn't do anything okay this is Slenderman I don't need this you are now entering okay every developer always has to make a um, horror game at some point which I'm not opposed to but it's PewDiePie bait at that point and that's it okay what the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet please be patient with me for a few more games and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting wow, so many games I have to make so many playlists for each game Oftentimes, Coda would put bizarre titles like this one at the start of mm. his games. Like Mirror's Edge. I've been playing some of that, so... I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead wow. to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you gonna do? Yeah. Okay, it's getting... S I can't quite make it up the stairs. Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. Yeah, but I can still jump. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Yeah. Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Okay, I pushed enter. Now I can go into this door that apparently people can't go into? Okay, this is too many things of text and I think he realized that press you to surrender nope can't press that a room that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games oh so this is like a little diary I suppose okay Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant yeah he said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate mm -hmm. person but that it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. I like this music too. I think he added it, but it still works. So he's a... I can't think of the word. Hmm. I'm not quite sure. Ready, set, fish. I like that. Okay. So there's no pool in sight. No, no lake or anything, so... No fishing pole. Ready, set, fish. I could hear water, I think. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and see if you can solve Except it. Except for the labyrinth. That was brilliant. <laughs> okay, so the puzzle. Nope. The puzzle I thought was going to be like, there's no door. There's no nothing. Oh, great. This is just brilliant. Let me in! Please! I really want to be let in. Okay, solved it. <laughs> nope. Don't nice! Don't that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. Okay. We're gonna Got see it. a lot. Bam! Genius! If I hit it, can I make it way back here? Boom! Yes! Okay. Don't know why there's three dots there, and I guess I should know what's up with that. Okay, so this is more puzzles. Maybe. So that seems to be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve a puzzle, you get to the end. Simple yeah. enough. All right. Like portal. I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this okay. room. Okay. Pressing enter. Three, two, one. Now. Ah. Oh. Oh, okay. Cool. Those are obviously fake, all of them, but that's about brilliant. That? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. Yeah. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game, since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Yeah. Either way, I think that the point is the same is that most of the time you don't get to know what you're missing or even that you're missing anything that's not your role as a mm -hmm. player so if your role here is not to understand then what a is a player it? doesn't have to experience everything they just have to experience what they want to and this game again oh but that's the end so i, I do have to go forward 
Okay, this is the same game. Aha. Uh -huh. So, this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. Cool. It's like a series. It could even be that the stairs game and puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in. Some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Wow. Okay. This is cool. I like this. It's unlike any game I've ever played. Because it's a bunch of little games. Like... I don't know, it's really sad that the guy doesn't make any more games, but he's definitely a... Let's talk about video game development for a second. Person. Every video game runs on what's called an engine, mm -hmm. which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. To make all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Yep, that's easy enough. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. Mm -hmm. It does, Stanley Parable's That's great. why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. No, can't quite get there. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds <sighs> of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Yeah, he takes advantage of that, which is nice of him. Oh, okay. <laughs> Bit hard to wrap your head around. So, can I wall run? <laughs> no, we don't want to go that far down. Okay, we did. It's alright. Okay. You probably can hear my keys. I'm fumbling with them, trying to stay afloat. Okay, so he just makes infinite amounts of these. Can I just go straight down to as many of I as I want? Okay, what's down here? You can't fall and die like in Portal. Apparently, this is some like glass or something. Can I get in there? No, that's just there. Okay. Well enough. This looks like a base Halo map. And then this, I don't know what this looks like. This looks scary, like horses are going to come out and kill me or something. <laughs> Apparently a prison now. Whoa. Okay. I don't know if I dropped a frame there or what, but it was looked weird. Can I like go? Nope. Can't go anywhere. It doesn't want me to. I'm in prison now. This prison. Funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. Wow. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> this is something I'm trying to jump I used to argue here. about a lot. You know whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games that was full of hundreds of individual games each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. <laughs> Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. Wow. <laughs> there was. He's a craft dealer. <laughs> okay. Um, well, evidently I have to go down here, so I will do that. Walking and walking and walking and walking and walking. The end is never the end, is never the end, is never the end, is never the end. Okay. This ambient sound is uh, a lot like Stanley Parable in that way, too. Again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Okay. Nope. Didn't want to go that time. It's okay. There's still no clear indication of what makes this time. puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. That right there is a kill zone. Stay out of it. Okay. Lightning comes out of the sky and it kills you. It's a pretty sky. 
if I was a real person, do you think I could like jump up and grab that and then climb out? Be pretty good. Listen, <laughs> with boxes over their heads. Here, Coda begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Mm hmm. <laughs> I prefer not to tell you. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> I don't remember anything. <laughs> uh, okay. I don't remember how to get here. No. I remember everything. There are other ways to get here. Be all mysterious. Too bad it doesn't have actual voice acting, I suppose. If only he could do impressions. I like how they switch. It's like, you talk and you listen. Okay, well we're leaving. And if you want to come with us, you can. I think we're trying to escape, but I can't quite tell. Nope. Let's go this way. And it's closed off. Okay. No, there wasn't. Yeah, I'll do that. Wow, this is a long conversation, isn't it? You work really hard on it. We'll do two, I don't care. <laughs> we'll see it again soon. Is the narrator talking through him now? Okay, let's go through here. It is different this time. They better not do something horrible. Okay, it's blocked off again. Some choices you just can't make again. And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. And now we look up and we see everything, right? Right? Let's hit our head a bunch of times. Okay. Er, okay, this looks like a half-life level or something. What is happening? It's a lamppost. It is. It's kind of okay, pretty. I can't tell you quite why, but... For some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading Are to you something. psychologist? He wants a destination. Which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. Like the Mario games. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. Cool. And as he we has go, direction. That idea and destination. Will clearer and clearer and the final clearer. destination. Okay. And they have a little fade out. It's brilliant. It's like one of my videos. I wish they had the end is never the end loading screen from Stanley Parable. We can leave notes. So this is like Dark Souls then. That's cool. In Dark Souls you can like leave... Hi! You scare me. <laughs> nice room. Not. <laughs> okay. Well. What do you so say? first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected <laughs> to the internet. All of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Koda. Yeah. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a oh, weekend wow. game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too pushy trying to get his attention. <laughs> Much wrong. I was over enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Oh, feel free to skip over this any of these depressed. notes if they're not doing anything for been. you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. 
either way, to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. Yeah. I see this person who's filled with thoughts <laughs> and feelings okay. and beliefs and has no way to express them except oh, as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. He even, like, writes like illiterates. <laughs> But it's ironic, isn't it? Oh, that's too that long. In playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. Wow. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much. Is because it felt like they let me have that He has personality here. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Okay, the door doesn't open. I can't read all of these guys. Burp. Burp, burp, burp. Okay, I'm just gonna keep going. I would love to actually read all of these, but I'm not going to. What does it mean? I don't know. These things are like little wisps. I swear this is a lot like Dark Souls though. If no one was doing this at the time, then maybe Dark Souls like stole it or maybe he stole it from Dark Souls or something, I don't know. At the end of this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. I can't jump. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. Yeah. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here. To step back and connect the pieces Is together. Is he connecting this to schizophrenia? To that elusive bigger picture. No. Nope. Lamp post. I don't like this sound. Hmm. Interesting. I haven't gotten to that part just yet. <laughs> okay, this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Hold on a second. Okay, we are going to stop right here for a quick second, um, but uh, in the next video, hopefully I will finish this game up, guys, so I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.